This video is going to be about the Teensy 3.2. And here it is, Teensy 3.2, uh, which is based on a Freescale MX20DX256 uh, uh, chip. And it's in a form factor that looks like an Arduino. And in fact, if we look at the back, the pin numbering sure looks a whole lot like the Arduino pin numbering system. In fact, you can run this thing off of 5 volts, etc., etc. Um, this seems to be the way people are doing business in the embedded market these days. If you, now, the interesting thing about uh, the Teensy, um, well, let me not talk about the interesting thing first. Let me just talk about the boring thing. It, it can work exactly like an Arduino if you like. And uh, in fact, I'll show you, it comes with a little blinky program uploaded already. And I will plug the jack into the Jill here. And there you go. You see Blinky, Blinky Light, that's pin 13, there's an LED there. You can use the same old Blinky program you use for everything else with Arduino on this, and it'll work. And it kind of looks like an Arduino um, Pro or an Arduino Nano, uh, same same size, same kind of, a little bit more pinouts. But And if you were to use this like an Arduino, uh, you'd have no need for it, because uh, the story doesn't end there. Now, you'll all remember... Uh, in the last video or so, we talked about, um, I talked about this bad boy, which was the, uh, the Spark Photon. And if you look at the Photon versus the Teensy, good Lord, they're virtually the same size with virtually the same pinout. Um, you know, what's happened is the manufacturers of these things have realized that, again, if you can... If you can uh, come out with something that looks like Arduino, all the Arduino people in the world will, will flock to it. And you can use your Arduino software on it. You could control motors with this if you wanted to, but you'd be wasting your time. You'd be better off using a regular Arduino. The Teensy comes from a company called PJRC, which uh, stands for, I guess, Paul and Robin. I, I think they may be married. It looks like they're a husband and wife team, or, or at least they're just very close. They have pictures of themselves going to Disneyland. You know, they got their vacation pictures on their website, along with ways to buy things like this. I've used their products before. They tend to focus on audio. So if I was to say anything is the real strength of PJRC, as far as I can tell, is that their audio products are really superior. I've got one of their MP one single board MP3 players that is just killer. Um, and I'm expecting the Teensy will be equally killer. The Teensy comes with software libraries that you can use to do things like generate, uh, oh, it, it synthesize sounds, so you can make a, uh, a, a digital synthesizer out of it, musical synthesizer. You can create guitar effect pedal boxes. You can create audio uh, manipulation uh, effects, reverb, chorus, delay, uh, all within this particular little chip. This chip is, um, yeah, it's an Arduino kind of thing, but let me tell you, it runs at 72 megahertz. You know, try that out on your typical Atmel. Uh, 72 megahertz overclockable to 96 megahertz. You could get uh, multi-channel sound out of this thing if you were to so desire. It has a 256K of uh, internal program space. Um, it, it, it's just a killer uh, design compared to the Arduino stuff out there. So yeah, we can do Blinky. If you want to do Blinky, we'll just blink away. Actually, I plus the button. If you want to do Blinky, just blink away. And actually, what happened was I pressed the button. That's how you program it, get into program mode. But what you really want to do is use this thing to process sound or to create sound. And uh, so if we're going to get sound out of the Teensy, I've got to have some kind of amplification device. I doubt this little bitty board is going to drive anything. Uh, so we need an amplifier. I've got a whole slew of these uh, Linear Systems uh, LT1677 amplifiers. Uh, that could be fine to, s to, to use. Um, I've used them before. They work pretty fine uh, for instrumentation. I don't know how great they are for audio. Uh, I guess you could use them for, I guess they're used for condenser mics. But just for the halibut, I've got this here uh, SparkFun Class D amplifier. Uh, it's a very low power audio amplifier, uh, reasonable gain and low fidelity. A Class D is basically going to, uh, it's basically pulse with, pulse with modulator. Um, 
uh, that's generating the sound. And so that's not going to be, if you're an audiophile, it's going to drive you nuts. You're not going to be able to listen to it. But for the purpose of listening to the output that we get out of our little teensy, I think I'm going to use this guy. So I'll solder some pins on it, and we'll use this here breadboard. Do something that seems like a cool thing to do now that I might regret later. Eh, who cares? Well, this, I th I've got these headers that are 90-degree uh, angle. And that will enable me to put the board in standing straight up like that. Um, I think I'll try that. Let me just, let's just try that. That could be kind of fun. We'll see where that goes. That one pin on and see how straight it looks. Yeah, that's probably all right for little hobby work. Okie dokie. Okay, this looks like I need that many pins. However many that many is, cut that off. And let me take these jumpers out of here before I forget that they're there. And we can put this in, well, actually, let's do the following. We can cut this guy off here. And then we can actually just seat it. I think we can anyway. Just seat it down in there. This is why I don't like to take these things in and out. Now you see that'll pop right off. But we'll put it on there and then I'll solder it in place. That way we know that it fit. bent the last pin there. So we're going to have to put that back. That's a bozo move that happens when you're moving too quickly. All right. And this one is the same. All right. Now we're just going to pop it in the board and the breadboard all the way toward the end here. Of course, I doubt I'll remember which pin is which, but thankfully the folks at PJRC, Paul and Robin, have provided this nice cheat sheet. Welcome. Welcome to Team C 3.2. I'll take a wider. Now that here's a nice cheat sheet that uh, Rob and, uh, or excuse me, that Paul and uh, Robin have provided with their, with the Team C. So it's got all kinds of important information about the pinouts, and you, know, you can't make a mistake. Can't go wrong when you've got the, got the Team C wants to be run at 3.3 uh, volts really doesn't even want any input signals more than 1.6. And a lot of this other stuff I've got, and a lot of the other Arduino stuff, runs at 3.3 or 5. And so um, I've got a bunch of these 3.3. This is a 78L. Can you see it there? 78L33. That means it's a 3.3 volt regulator. I'm going to want to run this off of this little 9-volt battery here. So I'm going to hook up this regulator on the breadboard. 
And I'm going to drive both this amplifier, which can run at 3.3 volts. The amplifier really wants somewhere around 5 volts, I think, but I can run it at 3.3. This is not a uh, pro audio application. And I'll run that at 3.3, and everybody so will be According to Paul and Robin, if I want to run this thing from an external power supply, I should disconnect it from the USB power, which is the way it's been going when I, you know, when I, if I were to plug it in, you'd see the light flash. So what they suggest that I need to do is to cut um, this little jumper right here. See, there's a little jumper right there, and there's a little jumper right in there. Now let's see if I can cut this. without wrecking my body parts and the teensy in the process. So that's probably enough. This is, a, this is a very sharp razor knife and under the microscope it doesn't look like much, but trust me, this would cut my fingers quite handily. As I have done many times in the past. Okay. I think those two things, I could test it with a meter, but I can see some of the bare circuit board underneath. As an aside, just to show you that uh, the room I'm using has a, is a multi-purpose room in our house. The wife does the sewing. I'm no good at sewing, so she does it. Um, I'm working on this stuff, so just to show you where we've set up for the video that we're doing. There's the microscope. There's the board that will be, uh, the breadboard we'll be putting the teensy on. We pan over here. There is a whole bunch of noisy equipment. There's the light for the microscope. There's the weller soldering station. Um, there's the, uh, the video input stuff and a little, little uh, reverberator thinger. And there's the mixing board that I need to use because, hey, the problem is that I need phantom power for this microphone. And uh, the only way to get it is to either go buy a phantom power thing or use my old mixing board. So I'm using the old mixing board. So all of this stuff is going into creating the little video. I got to do a video about how I create videos one of these days. Uh, there's your Cypress FreeSock 2 on the right. Obviously with the big SparkFun symbol on it, came from SparkFun. Uh, it's a powerful chip put on a board and mutated into a configuration to look a lot like an Arduino Mega or Arduino Due. Uh, in fact, you can use the Arduino software with it, and if you do, you'll be wasting your time because this chip has a lot more power than your typical 8-bit uh, or 16-bit um, uh, Atmel. On the left is the Teensy 3.2 that we're going to be talking about. Once again, you can use the Arduino software. You can hook it up exactly like an Arduino. The pinouts are the same, but if you do that, you're, you're not using the strength of this particular hardware, which is uh, audio audio processing, audio creation, uh, just a, a very powerful platform for manipulating audio. Okay, let's go and uh, get into this stuff. One of the nice things about the Teensy versus your typical Arduino audio-wise is that the DAC output, digital to analog converter output, is 12 bits, and they provide this little program here from their website to allow you to try it for yourself. So I've got that loaded. See, it's a typical Arduino IDE. There's regular old Ardu Arduino software there. And if we look over here, there's the Teensy. And we get into focus. There we go. There's the Teensy in focus. And I've got pin 14, which is the DAC output pin connected to the scope. And there's the scoped. And there's the scope output. As you can see, now that's a nice uh, waveform, about 1.8 volts, 1.6 volts, and it's about 6 hertz. Now, okay, that's a nice, there's no doubt that's a nice waveform. That's a beautiful sine wave. It doesn't look at all quantized. Um, but what we've got to ask ourselves is what would you use a, you know, a 6 hertz waveform for? Now, you can use it to trigger different things. Um, you can put it in a volt into a multiplier, um, but let's say we want to get a higher frequency out. Then we got to play with the software, and once we get into usable frequencies for you know audio for synthesizer range and things like that, this is fine for an LFO, for instance. But if we want to um, 
to get uh, some faster waveforms out in the audio frequency range, we're going to have to uh, play some games and perhaps deal with some quantization. So here I've done a little modification of the program. I've taken out the delay completely, let it run flat out. I've also multiplied the, uh, the frequency that we're running by by 10x. And uh, as you'll see, you know, you'd expect to get some quantization there because I've, I've just taken the step up by 10 times. In fact, if we take a look at the scope, we find we've still got the nice waveform uh, that's uh, about 1.8 volts. But the frequency now is running at 630, so it's 10x faster as you'd expect. Frequency is now 635 hertz. Um, so I've sped things up, but I've also, uh, I've also created uh, a step function in there. So if you were to take an FFT of that, you'd see a lot of uh, spurious uh, uh, side lobes due to that quantization. So it's not a pure wave, but you know, you could filter it. So what you'd have to do is take this output, filter it somehow, uh, you know, low-pass filter, and, uh, and you'd pretty much get that waveform out pretty clean. Uh, still, it's a lot nicer than the pulse width modulation uh, that you get out of a typical Arduino. I mean, you can, you can do some really cool audio effects with this stuff. Okay, switching to handheld mode here. What I tried to do was I hooked the Teensy to the SparkFun amp, and then the output of the little SparkFun amp I have going into the the microcube here. There it is, the old microcube. Now, what I noticed was almost immediately I got this waveform, which was kind of a crappy waveform, as you can see. There's a lot of noise on that waveform. Uh, let's see if we can uh, let's see if we can get that noise. Uh, if we can trigger on it. A little difficult to trigger on the noise. Hit auto manual. Well, at any rate, if we take a look, we see we got just a hell of a lot of not such goodness there. There we go. Take a look at that. That is not a signal you want to bring home to mom. Right? So what you see there is hash. And where is all that hash coming from? Guess what? It's coming from this guy. Watch what happens when I when I pull this thing out. Okay, that's the waveform with the amp taken out. Let's pop, pop that amp back in and see what we get. Now I've put the little spark fun amp back in. And as you can see, we've got a very noisy signal here. Very, very noisy. And if we zoom out, let's just stop. Look at that noise. That's all actually digital hash caused by the way this guy works. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to ump, whoa, that's neat, because it's still plugged into the amp. Let's unplug that. Okay, so he's unplugged. Let's turn, go, let's trigger back at something reasonable here. And there you see pretty much a perfectly serviceable waveform. So what does this tell us? What this tells us is that this guy is injecting a lot of noise into the signal. Now, this is not pro audio, but this is audio. And it's not noise, and so this isn't going to work. I, I couldn't get any kind of uh, uh, reasonable sound out of here. I could only get the hash. In addition, this loads down the output so much that um, the waveform basically goes to zip. So we need a different way to amplify this. And you know, this seems to call for an op amp, and I seem to have three of them sitting right here. Okay, there's that nice program that uh, that allows you to set. 12 bits of analog resolution and generate a nice pretty sine wave. And what I did was I commented out the uh, weight statements so that it would go as fast as it could possibly go. And then I tried as hard as I could to amplify the signal. So I took one of my LT1677 
high performance, high speed, high accuracy amplifiers. And I connected it to the good old microcube over here, which we had before. Let's turn the puppy on. All right, microcube is on. Now, we're going to notice something. Right now we've got a flat line. I don't have any power going on yet. Here we go. I'm going to turn on the power, and you're going to hear something kind of un... Here we go. Kind of unpleasant. Can you hear that in the background? That would be a 60-cycle hum. Why is that? What's the frequency at which this little thing is running? 59.17 hertz. Hey, I did all that work to reproduce the 60-cycle hum. The yellow line is what's coming out of the teensy, and then my amplifier, I just basically made a buffer to connect it to the uh, amplifier so that uh, I could get a couple watts out of it. But I did all that to make a 60 cycle hum. Now, the interesting thing about the teensy as well, let's see if I can get in here. If we go over to teensy Duino, he calls it, we go into the tools. We can change the clock speed. So right now I'm running at 72 megahertz. I'm going to run at 96 megahertz. I'm going to speed the clock up. It's an overclocking situation. And I'm going to load that in, and you're going to hear a change. Aha, it's higher. You hear that note higher? It's because we're now at 63 hertz. Well, as it turns out, with this super hyper accurate sine wave and with the processor running at 96 megahertz, there's really no way to create a sine wave that smooth uh, at any higher frequency than that. Now, you could use that sine wave. i turn off channel 2 here. You could use that sine wave to you know, generate an LFO for, uh, for an amp, or rather, you know, for an um, LFO for one of your oscillators on an analog synth, analog synth or a filter, but you're not going to use it to generate the tones. Uh, because basically, this is as fast as it's going to go at this point in this high precision mode. Well, ladies and gentlemen, tomorrow is another day, and this is it. I spent all day yesterday working on the Teensy, getting the sound programming figured out, getting a little amplifier plugged in, getting the power straightened out, and here, behold, the majesty of geekdom. All of this just to get the sounds for you to listen to. We're going to see this thing work, and it is way cool. Okay, let's ogle this setup. Over here, we've got the Teensy itself plugged in via USB to the computer. It's being powered by a 7833, actually being powered through a 7833 voltage regulator from the Rigel power supply, which is down there. And we're monitoring the output on the Rigel scope. Focus, focus, there we go. All right, so C powered by the 7833, talking to an LT16, oh, it's a 1677 high performance op amp amplifier. You don't need anything like that to amplify this. You could amplify it with a, I don't know, with a, with a Walkman. I, mean, I don't even make Walkman anymore. You could amplify it with a 741 or, or your iPad for that matter. Uh, and then over here we have two things that aren't even involved in the circuit at all. I'm monitoring the output. Uh, through all this wiring to the microcube, which is sitting here on my desk. See, that's what happens when you don't have the right connector for the end. You go from connector to connector to connector. And uh, well, the first we thing got. we want to look at here is this here web page, which is the audio system design tool for Teensy Audio Library. This is one of the things that makes this, uh, this whole system so cool. Now, you can use, you're going to use the Arduino IDE to program the thing. Uh, back in the day, back in Teensy 3.1 days or Teensy 3.0 days, you had to use the AVR uh, program, AVR Dude or whatever it's called. Uh, and that made things a little bit more difficult. You had to program the, um, right, uh, all of the interrupts and everything yourself. You don't have to do that anymore. Now you've got this nifty little library. Teensy Duino takes care of everything else. And uh, let's take a look here now at the audio library. I think I showed you yesterday how I could change the processor speed. 
I'm running at 96 megahertz. This is a pretty fast thing. So what we're going to do here in, with the audio library is we're going to pull components. Let's see. I can pull components out of here and place them on place them on this palette. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a waveform generator called waveform 1 and I'm going to connect it to the DAC. That's DAC is the output. Uh, let's get that in focus. Hope there we go. I'm going to connect it to the DAC. And so I can do this graphically. I say I want to generate a waveform internally and I want the output to go to the DAC. And then I go up here, I hit the export button and it gives me the code to do that. Then I go over to my Arduino library. And I've, as you can tell, I've done a lot of these. And let's see. Okay. All right, so what we have here is a nice 440 hertz sound. There's the code that generates the waveform, waveform one. Uh, it's a uh, 1.0 volume, 440 hertz, and I'm using the sine wave. And uh, you can hear the, the tone in the background. And so that's just waveform one going to the DAC. Now let's try something a little more interesting. Let's uh, put a chorus effect in the signal path and see what we get out of that. All right, now I'm going to update the uh, code. You can see the chorus, the chorus line, the line for the chorus begin in the, uh, in the code itself. And there's not that much difference in the in the sound. So let's do something else here. Let's try uh, let's try a flange. Okay. So what I've done here is I've created two tone sweeps. Actually, it's one tone sweep going up and down, going through a flanger. And you can hear it sounds. Mighty strange. So just to show you some of the uh, some of the sound generation techniques you can do with this thing. Okay, here's another fun one. Uh, what we're doing here is I've got two waveforms: waveform two, waveform one. I'm putting waveform one through a chorus and into a mixer. I'm putting waveform two through a delay into the mixer. They're both the same waveforms. They're just, one is 440 hertz and one is 448 hertz. Putting it in the mixer, sending it out through the deck. Let's see what that sounds like. I should get some interesting resonance. And let's look at the other one playing because this one hasn't started uploading yet. Here we go. Oh, that's kind of boring. Let's turn this to 444. There we go. Take these odd numbers and see if we get something even wilder. Interesting. So I hope you get an idea that the, synthesis wise, you can do all kinds of cool stuff. Now let's let's do something a little bit more realistic. Here we're gonna play some samples. And what do I got here? Oh, got an error in the code. Hang on. Okay, I had a little error in the code there um, because I was typing too many things at once with a camera on my lap. So this thing works a little bit like a drum machine. Now this, I don't have um, I don't have the shield that goes with this. If I had the shield, I'd be able to press a button and do what I'm going to do. Instead, I have to ground certain pins. Listen. Oh, turn that a little louder. So I touch that pin. I get a symbol. There's a drum. 
There's a gong. It has a great debounce capability, so, you know, if you just touch it. And you can play more than one sample at a time. So these are samples that are now uploaded into the Teensy itself, and it's just playing those samples. Pretty nice, eh? So, so what you got here is a little drum machine. Okay, finally what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take input from the, uh, the ADC analog to digital converter, pass it through to the DAC output. I'm not going to process the signal. I'm just going to take a signal in and send it out just to prove the hardware is working. So what do we got here? If I focus in, we got my little iPod connected in now. And let's see what happens if I turn it on. We actually got a, there we go. So what I'm doing is I'm just playing through the iPod. See, I can, if I lower the volume on the iPod, volume lowers. And that's going through the Teensy. If I look at the waveform on the scope. Hey, I recognize that piano player. I think I recognize that piano player. All right. You know, just simply acting as an amplifier is a wonderful thing. You don't need a teensy to act as an amplifier to play through the microcube. In fact, I could take all this stuff out of the equation and just simply plug the iPod into the microcube and do exactly the same thing. No, what we want to do is we want to process that sound somehow. Hey, so why not do something crazy like, let's put the sound that comes in from the iPod through a chorus. A chorus effect. Let's see what we get. Well, you know, not exactly pleasing to the air. It adds a little twangy resonance, and I think there's some ultrasonic frequencies in there as well. But you get the idea. Uh, this thing is an audio processor extraordinaire in a little tiny package. Uh, if you wanted to treat this like a regular Arduino, you'd probably be wasting your time. Uh, there, this audio library is vast. It's got all kinds of cool functionality to it. You can act it like, use it like a synthesizer. People are using these things as guitar stomp pedals. Uh, you can use it as a sound processor, as a recorder. It will record. You can plug an SD card in uh, if you buy the, uh, the the shield for it. You can record. You can play back. Uh, your MP3s, I mean, it could be the iPod of uh, uh, plenty, I suppose. And um, the, uh, you know, it's basically limited only by your imagination. I haven't gone into any of the, uh, any of the uh, ADSR effects, the envelope, the multiplication, the fades. Uh, it's all there. And um, it's fun to play with, as you can tell. I spent the whole day yesterday trying to learn how it worked. Now, that would be, I think that's the main downside of the of the teensy it's got a vast library of s that's to support it but i tell you there just aren't a whole lot isn't a whole lot of example code out there to figure out um you got to weed through their uh their blog post you got to weed through their forum and you can find it it took me you know about 12 hours but i found everything uh, that i needed to do to do this little demo took me a day i had a lot of fun um, and I would say uh, this is probably not for the neophyte. Uh, you s even though they use Arduino, you still got to know quite a bit to get it running. But uh, if you don't mind getting past some of the technology, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy, this is a fun box to play with. Anyway, hey, thanks for watching. I'm Joe. Um, if you like what you saw, please give me a thumb up or down. I don't care which way. Uh, send me a comment. Subscribe. I'll be doing more of these analyses of these boards in the future, plus some more arty stuff, uh, some more of that video poetry stuff that uh, my wife's friends seem to like. And uh, again, thanks a lot for watching.